For a lot of photographers, a 24-70 lens is a must-have lens in their camera bag. But it usually is also quite an expensive lens as well. So today, we are going to have a look at the latest 24-70 f2.8 lens from Sigma. And this lens is quite a bit cheaper than the other 24-70 2.8 lens in the market. But is it a good lens or not? Let's find out in this video. Kia good morning everyone, Richard Wong here, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to have a look at the Sigma 24-70 f2.8 DGDN lens. This lens is specially designed for mirrorless camera and it is available for the Sony E-Mount and also the Leica L-Mount. This is actually the second time I do a review of this lens because about one year ago, I did a review of the Sony E-Mount version. So today we are going to have a look at this L-Mount version. Look at the size of this lens. I wouldn't call it a small lens, but if you compare to the other 24-70 2.8 lens in the market, this is probably one of the smallest 24-70 2.8 lens in the market, which is a bit surprising because Sigma Arts series lenses usually are quite big and quite heavy. But having said that, it is definitely not a lightweight lens as well. The weight of this lens is around 830 grams. So yeah, it feels quite heavy when you hold it in your hand. The build quality of this lens is excellent. It feels very, very solid. And compared to the other 24-70 2.8 lenses in the market, including the first party one, which usually is quite a bit more expensive, I actually feel this Sigma lens feel more premium than the other lenses. I think this is something that a lot of other manufacturers should learn from Sigma because a lot of time, the modern lenses we have these days feel quite plasticky, but this Sigma lens definitely doesn't feel plasticky at all. The lens has an 82mm front filter thread and it is a weatherproof lens so it should offer good protection against dust and water splash. On the side, we have the autofocus focus switch at the top and then we have the AFL button in the middle and then at the bottom, we have a lock switch here for you to lock the lens at the widest end so when you lock it, the front of the lens wouldn't extend so give you some protection against lens grip. And to unlock the lens, you can either use this switch to unlock it or you can just turn this zoom ring and then it will automatically unlock the lens for you. There is no optical image stabilizer building on this lens. So this is not really a big problem because most of the l -Man cameras, they all have a good in-body image stabilizer. Ironically, if you want to pair this lens with Sigma's own FP or FPL cameras, because the FP and FPL, they both don't have the in-body image stabilizer, that means if you use this lens with Sigma's own l -Man camera, then you have no optical or mechanical image stabilization at all. I remember when Sigma first announced this lens and I was doing some homework and research to find out more information about this lens, I noticed that Sigma didn't really talk much about the autofocus motor or the autofocus system on this 24-70 lens. So I was a little bit worried about the autofocus performance of this lens because usually the manufacturer would talk quite a bit about the autofocus motor they used on their lenses. But when I got the lens and tried it out, I found the autofocus performance of this lens actually is pretty good. Especially when I'm taking photos using the AFS mode, the autofocus speed is very fast and also very accurate with pretty much no hunting at all. And also the autofocus operation is very quiet and very smooth as well. I'm going to talk about the video autofocus a little bit later on in this review. While this is definitely not a macro lens and even Sigma themselves, they didn't market it as a macro lens, this lens actually has pretty good close-up capability. When shooting at the wide end, the maximum magnification is 1 to 2.9 
which is very decent for a 24 to 70 2.8 lens. There are just a few little things that you have to watch out for if you want to use this lens to take some nice close up photos. The first thing is, if you are shooting at the wide end at the maximum magnification, the front of the lens is only a few centimeters away from the target. So yeah, it gets very close. So you have to watch out whether you are casting shadows onto your subject. And the second thing is, when you are taking photo at a very close distance, I noticed the image become a little bit softer than normal. So if you're taking photo at f2.8, the photo could look a little bit soft you have to stop down to around f5.6 or so, then you get some pretty sharp close-up photos. Okay, I just said that this lens could be a little bit soft if you are taking photo at the maximum aperture at a very close distance. But if you take photo at the normal distance, then this is a very sharp lens just like pretty much all the other Sigma Art lenses. At 24mm, this lens center sharpness is already excellent at f2.8. Stop down to f4 or f5.6 only improve the sharpness marginally. At 24mm focal length, the corner sharpness at f2.8 is also quite good. When stop down to f4, it becomes better and at f5.6, it becomes really quite sharp. At the longest focal length 70mm, the center sharpness is also excellent at f2.8. Stopping down the lens doesn't really make much difference to the center sharpness at all. Corner at f2.8, I would say is very acceptable on the 24 megapixel Lumix S5. Stop down to f4 would increase the corner sharpness and at f5.6, the corner also become really quite sharp. With the 11 round aperture braid design, the bokeh from the Sigma 2470 f2.8 DG DNR lens is just beautiful. It is round, it is soft, very smooth with almost no sweary bokeh at the corner at all. I can't really remember I've seen another 2470 2.8 lens that would render more beautiful bokeh than this Sigma lens. Because of the built-in distortion correction profile, when I use this lens on the Panasonic S5, I see almost no distortion at all. However, I did remember when I test this lens on the Sony a7 III with the distortion correction turned off, I would then notice quite a bit of distortion, especially at the wide end. Chromatic aberration is really well controlled by this lens. Checking all those high contrast real world photo I shot with this lens, and I see virtually no color fringing at all. At the wide angle end, vignetting is quite noticeable at f2.8. Stop down to f4 would improve it quite a lot, but there's still a bit of vignetting even at f5.6. At the 70mm telephoto end, at f2.8, vignetting is also noticeable, but it is quite a bit better than at f2.8 at the wide 24mm end. When stopped down to f5.6, then vignetting become virtually non-existent. Lens flare control is excellent with this Sigma lens. I see very minimal amount of lens flare when shooting my normal real world photos, even when there's some bright light source inside the frame. It's only when I directly shoot into the sun on a sunny day or shoot into a bright light at night, then I will see a small amount of ghosting. For video shooters who are looking at buying this Sigma lens to do some video filming, I got some good news and bad news for you. The good news is, this lens has very minimal amount of focus briefing. Look at this test video footage. When I change the focus distance from infinity back to very close focus distance, there's very minimal amount of focus briefing, which is much better than most other 2470 lens in the market. And now the bad news, if you use it on a Panasonic body and you change the menu focus setting to linear, the lens doesn't really respect it, it's still operating in a non-linear mode. And also the autofocus performance doesn't seem to be very good when you are shooting video using continuous autofocus. This test footage I was shooting at 4K25, it doesn't really follow me very well at all, even when I'm just walking slowly towards the camera. And even when I change to 4K60, I think 
the autofocus performance improved a bit, but I would say it's still not really good. As I have mentioned at the beginning, this Sigma 2470 2.8 DGTN lens is quite a bit cheaper than most other 2470 2.8 lens in the market. So it is a very good affordable alternative compared to those other 2470 2.8 lenses. But just being affordable is probably not very good. Fortunately, this lens image quality is also very good as well. The sharpness is very good and other things like lens flare control, chromatic aberration, bokeh, they are all very good as well. You can use this lens to shoot portrait or weddings or landscape and you can definitely get some very good results. I'm also a big fan of the build quality of the Sigma Arts lenses and this one is no exception. I really think other lens manufacturers should learn from Sigma how you can make a modern lens feel solid, doesn't feel plasticky at all. This lens just feels absolutely amazing when you're holding it and when you are shooting with it, the shooting experience is also excellent. I guess the biggest complaint I have with this lens is if you want to use it for video, then the continuous autofocus performance is really not that good. I know some of you will say, oh, Elman cameras with contrast detection, uh, autofocus performance is not good, etc. But to be honest, I feel with the latest Panasonic camera like the S5, especially with the later firmware, the continuous autofocus performance is actually not bad at all. When I test it with um, some other latest Panasonic lenses on the Panasonic body, the autofocus, continuous autofocus performance is actually pretty good. But with this Sigma lens and also some other Sigma lens that I have tested recently, yeah, the continuous autofocus performance is still not that good. So I really hope the Elman Alliance members can work together to improve the continuous video autofocus performance when you are using the lenses from one manufacturer on the body from another manufacturer. But other than that, if you are mainly a photographer or even if you shoot video but mostly using manual focus, then this Sigma 24 to 70 2.8 DGDN lens is a fantastic lens and offer you excellent value for money.